few machines in racing history have commanded such awe and fear as the Toyota Eagle Mark III. It wasn't just a car, it was an aerodynamic juggernaut that redefined downforce and devoured the IMSA GTP championship with the ferocity of a starving beast. This isn't your typical story of speed and horsepower, it's a saga of daring innovation, mind-bending physics and a car so potent it practically extinguished the very category it raced in. The Mark III wasn't a blank canvas, it emerged from the crucible of experience, its genes carrying the lessons learned from its temperamental predecessor, the HF 8990. Juan Manuel Fangio II, who would later reign supreme in the Mark III, found the HF 8990 a fecal mistress with super narrow margins. You see, the HF 8990 had a persistent lack of front grip, combined with overwhelming amounts of rear downforce. This created an imbalanced car with a significant tendency to understeer, which is an ideal in the world of racing. So, Toyota had their work cut out with the Mark III. Enter John Ward, who would build the perfect chassis, and Hiro Fujimori, who conjured an aerodynamic symphony like no other. Then came Drino Miller, the engine maestro. Now to truly understand how insane this engine was, you need to remember that most of the cars in this class was powered by big V8s and screaming V12s, whereas the Eagle Mach 3 was powered by a production based 2.1 litre 4 cylinder engine boosted to a monstrous 800 horsepower in race form and over 1000 horsepower in qualifying spec. That's insane! But the power was just a part of the equation when it came to this beast and downforce was another, arguably more significant one. You see, in the world of downforce, the Mark III truly flexed its titanium muscles. Unlike most rivals clinging to one-piece underfloors, the Mark III sported a revolutionary separate front diffuser, channeling air like a wind-taming sorcerer. The result? Six and a half thousand pounds of ground-hugging force. That's like putting an African rhino on the roof of the car. But Fujimori wasn't done. He unleashed a dual element rear wing, a technological marvel that catapulted the downforce figure to a staggering 10,000 pounds. Imagine piloting a car with the grip of a woman in labor. That's the Mark III experience. Now while competitors guzzled fuel with their thirsty V8s and V12s, the Mark III proved David Kutzle Goliath. Drino Miller's four-cylinder masterpiece not only churned out obscene horsepower but also sipped fuel like a hummingbird on a sugar rush. The Japanese engineers in the other city may have scoffed, but Miller's engine roared triumphantly, conquering the grueling 24 hours of Daytona and silencing doubters in one deafening heartbeat. Now piloting the Mach 3 wasn't for the faint of heart. It wasn't a car you drove, it was a machine you wrestled, a force of nature you coaxed into submission. PJ Jones, a young gun f with fire in his veins, took the wheel in 1992. Adapting to the Mark III's downforce vortex was a baptism by speed. You see, the Mark III demanded not just skill, but faith. Jones stated in reference to the experience. Imagine breaking just before the 100-foot marker at Laguna Seca, relying on invisible forces to stop a 2,300-pound rocket. The harder you went, the harder it performed. Now, the carbon brakes added another layer of complexity. They delayed bite, a taste of faith in the car's otherworldly grip. Now that you've got a decent idea of how crazy this car is, let's talk about one of the craziest races in history. The 1993 Daytona 24 Hours. Now this race was a masterclass in overcoming adversity. Jones, Fangio and Rocky Moran started with a pole setting lap that would stand for 25 years, edging their names in the annals of speed. Yes, this car set a lap time of 1 minute 33.8 seconds and that lap time would remain unbeaten till 2019, which is crazy. So with this crazy time, the Mark III obviously started in pole position. But fate, a fecal mistress, had other plans. This Moore's early miscue as well as Moran's mid-race puke incident. Yes, you heard that right, one of the drivers had an incident and unfortunately, other drivers had to get in and drive the car with the stench still thick within the cockpit. Which sounds awful. Yet, this beast had resilience woven into its titanium chassis as rivals succumbed to engine woes. The Joan, Moran, Desmore trio clawed their way back, transforming their spare into a dramatic come-from-behind victory. 
with the dual element wing unleashed, 1993 became the Mark III's year. Fang Yeo, a maestro of precision, collected six wins and the IMSA crown, while Jones added two more victories to the tally. But the GTP category, unable to contain this technological behemoth, breathed its last breath in 1993. The Mark III had not only dominated, it had inadvertently rendered its own playground obsolete. After 1993, the GTP category was discontinued. At the end of it, the Eagle Mark III wasn't just a race car, it was a technological landmark. It pushed the boundaries of downforce to the edge of physics, squeezed unimaginable power from an unassuming engine and demanded a level of driver confidence bordering on insanity. It proved that small could be mighty and that innovation could be triumphant. So at the end of it, let me know what you thought of this video and what you think of this car. As well as this crazy race, I think it's insane. I couldn't imagine having to drive a car for hours on end after somebody puked in it. Um, maybe I'm just a sissy, but I don't think I would have been able to do it. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you guys did like it, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh? Thank you.